Were you encouraged by the message today? I was so blessed and challenged at the same time. The main conclusion was this, to stand with humility and boldness within the gospel. As children of God, we don't need to be afraid of or intimidated by the world. We don't need to feel pressured to follow the ways of non-believers for fear of rejection, failure, or persecution. Like Elijah, we must stand boldly but humbly before the world because we know who we are, children of the living God. The people of the world assert that their way of thinking and lifestyle is correct, but the Word of God is the only truth. The Bible's main message is that Jesus is the Christ, the only answer. There is no other way of salvation from sin, separation from God, and Satan. Once we know this, we will be able to stand boldly in the face of ridicule, criticism, and even persecution, just like Elijah. There was a time Elijah felt discouraged and lonely, but God's plan for him would be fulfilled despite Elijah's feelings about himself and the situation. The five people God used to change the world were not learned, wealthy, or extraordinary people. They were normal people who simply held on to the eternal truth that Jesus is the Christ. They had faith in a mighty God who loved them and answered their prayers. The five people were Elijah, Elisha, the widow of Zarephath, the Shunammite woman, and Obadiah. Reverend Ruth spoke about three movements that took place because of these five individuals. Their devotion and faith were the catalyst that brought about the miracles. We must also see these movements arise in our own lives, churches, and regions. First, it is the Mount of Carmel movement. What happened in this place? The famous battle between Elijah and the 450 prophets of Baal took place on this mountain. Elijah challenged these false prophets to a battle to see who the true God of the universe was. Whichever sacrifice was burned up would show the evidences of the strength of that God. Well, as many of you already know, Elijah's sacrifice was completely burned up and all the water that drenched the sacrifice and fill the ditch around the altar was licked up. It was an awesome display of God's power. This event changed the flow of disasters in Israel. There had been a drought in Israel for three years because of the idol worship. No rain on the land for three years. But right after this event, Elijah prayed for rain and it began to rain. When we stand in this world with confidence and assurance in the truth of the gospel, God will change the flow of disasters in our fields and nations through us as well. The second movement God raised through these individuals was the Mount Horeb movement. It was the place Elijah received new strength from God and a historic message to raise his prepared disciples. When Elijah wanted to give up, God was about to begin his great work. He had the plan to raise up a new king and overthrow King Ahab. He prepared Elisha, the next prophet, who would do even greater works than Elijah. He had 7,000 disciples who had never bowed down before Baal. God has his amazing plan to save our nation and field through us, but many times, we are unable to see His greater purpose in our struggles, and we just feel like giving up. At our own Mount Horeb, we must receive spiritual power through worship every day. Only then can we have the strength to do God's will in our lives. And lastly, the most important movement God raised through these five people was the remnant movement in Dothan. Remnant means remaining ones the scattered ones, or the stump. The remnant are the people whom God has chosen 
to fulfill his covenant in a generation where all have fallen in the darkness. The remnant also signifies the younger generation whom God has prepared to change the world with the gospel. Elisha was involved in raising disciples in the city of Dothan. His greatest work was in teaching and training the future spiritual leaders of Israel. This is our greatest mission and purpose. It is to prepare the future generation to stand as God's witnesses in this world of darkness. I am so blessed to be in the ministry of raising remnants for Christ. I am an educator and missionary for young children. I believe with all my heart that children around the world are hungry for more than just bread and drink. They are spiritually hungry for God's Word. I am praying for more teachers and leaders to open their eyes to see the desperate need to train the young children in the gospel and prepare them for the fierce spiritual battle awaiting their future. If we raise the future leaders of Vanuatu to fear the Lord and love the gospel, they will be the ones to block the wars and disasters and bring true restoration to the church. I praise God and I pray for the new president of Vanuatu, Reverend Talis Obed Moses. I pray he will truly be like King David and King Hezekiah who prayed for the people and stood as a true leader of faith. May the Lord give all of you the evidence of faith of Mount Carmel, the spiritual power of worship at Mount Horeb, and the blessing of the remnant at Dothan. Jesus Hemi Christ. We will close with a song called Deep Within My Heart, which is a prayer for the remnant, the future leaders of the world. I would also like to share a drawing I made while meditating on this message. I hope it can help you remember the message throughout the week. God bless you. Deep within my soul I have the passion of God I hear the cry of His heart For the world that's dark Our children are seized by worldly things I pray that you claim their hearts again Deep within my heart I know the plan of God, His desire, His love for the field. How He wants to heal the people who bow before false gods. I pray that they find Your love for them. Why should I live? To what should I cling? And what should make my heart want to 